Identical twins, also known monozygotic twins, are not the result of a woman releasing two eggs during ovulation. Instead, they form from a single fertilization process. Only one sperm can successfully penetrate the outer layer of the egg. If a single egg is fertilized by a single sperm, forming one zygote. This zygote contains all the genetic information for one individual. The timing of the zygote split is crucial, as it determines the placentation and the shared membranes of the twins. If the zygote splits very early, within the first three days after fertilization, this early split allows enough time for each embryo to develop its own chorion and amnion, resulting in two separate placentas and sacs. The two resulting embryos will implant separately in the uterus. It's called dichorionic diamniotic twins. This is the least common type of identical twinning, around 20% of all twins. Despite having separate placentas and sacs, these twins are still genetically identical. If the splitting occurs between days 4 and 8, after the chorionic sac has developed but before the amnion has formed, the twins will share a single placenta but have separate amniotic sacs. It's called monochorionic diamniotic twins. This is the most common type of identical twinning accounting for about 75% of all twins. In these pregnancies, a thin membrane separates the two fetuses within the shared chorionic sac. This type of twins have unique risks due to their shared placenta. The twins are connected by blood vessels within the placenta, which can sometimes lead to complications related to unequal blood flow. These complications include Twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome. This is a serious condition that affects about 10 to 15 percent of monochorionic diamniotic twins. It occurs when there is an imbalance in the blood flow between the twins. One twin transfers blood to the other twin through the placental connections. The donor twin can become anemic and have too little amniotic fluid, while the recipient twin can develop an excessive amount of blood and amniotic fluid which can lead to heart failure. Another complication is selective fetal growth restriction. This happens when one twin receives a smaller portion of the placenta and therefore doesn't grow as well as the other twin. If one twin dies in the womb, the shared blood supply can put the surviving twin at a significant risk of death or neurological injury. If the division of the zygote happens even later, between days 8 and 13, after both the chorion and amnion have developed, the twins will share both a single placenta and a single amniotic sac. This is called monochorionic monoamniotic twins. It's considered the rarest and riskiest type of identical twins, about 1 to 2 percent of all twins. as there's a higher chance of umbilical cord entanglement, which can compromise blood flow to one or both babies. If the splitting is incomplete or occurs after day 13, the embryos may not fully separate, leading to conjoined twins. But this is extremely rare. Identical twins share nearly the exact same genetic material because they originated from a single zygote. Any differences that emerge are due to environmental factors or very rare genetic mutations that occur after the split. Due to sharing the same genetic information, identical twins are almost always the same sex. They often look remarkably alike, especially in early life, though subtle differences in features, fingerprints, and personalities develop over time due to unique environmental influences both in and out of the womb. If you like the 3D medical animations, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.